Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing? As you can see, my cat, Gracie, is taking a bath in the background. She, <laughs> she wants to be in my chair, but she'll wait her turn, and then she'll get in my chair. Anyway, I hope you had an awesome day today. Whew, I tell you what, my legs are very sore. I feel like I worked out yesterday. But I went on a hike, and I'll tell you about that. I'll tell you about my challenge uh, while hiking, and I want to speak to you a little bit about challenges in our lives. Anyway, so I hope you had an awesome day. I did not get a lot accomplished today, but it's okay. I can barely move. I'm just thankful that I could get out of bed. That was a plus. That was a big plus for me today. All right, we are going to do Psalm 35. I haven't even written it down yet. And I don't know what else we're going to read. We may read something else. Say hi, Gracie. <laughs> She's a bit of a mess. She goes, I'm kind of shy. I just want to hide behind your big old head. <laughs> yes, I'm bathing. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. I hope she doesn't attack my head. I hope she doesn't attack my big head. Okay, well, let's pray. God, we just come to you and we just thank you. We just thank you for all the many blessings that you give us. We thank you that you are on your throne and you are in control, God, and that there is absolutely nothing that is going on right this second, that you don't know every detail about it. You don't know the solution and you don't know the outcome. God, we just thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. Thank you for being our shelter in the storm. Thank you for being our strength and our refuge. Thank you for... Um, being with us at all times, God, for caring for us, for even sending us helpers when we need helpers, God, for teaching us the lessons and our challenges that you teach us. God, we just uh, thank you for being our creator and our sustainer and our provider. And uh, we thank you that you love us and that you have called us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we just pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they would be saved. We pray for the prodigals, God. We pray for your prodigal children to come home, your sons and your daughters, God. We pray for them to be drawn back to you for them to return to you, for them to repent, for to be reconciled, God, and that their relationship with you would be new again. God, we pray for all the people that are on that island where that volcano has just gone on for over a month, God. We just pray for them. We pray for um, safety and protection. We pray for that you would meet their needs, that you would send people that would be the hands and feet of Jesus, the loving compassion of Jesus to help these people and all the people that are in disaster because we know that disasters go on continually every day somewhere. God, we just pray that you would be with these people, that they would be drawn to you in their time of need. God, we pray for all the sick people. We just pray for miraculous healing. We pray that they would feel your presence, God. We pray that they would trust your process of healing. Sometimes it's not exactly what they want. But God, we know that you are the great physician and you are the one that is in control of healing. God, we just pray for people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. We just pray, God, that you would um, be with them and that they would feel your presence. And God, we pray for truth to rise above all the lies that we hear in the world. We just pray for your truth to reign supreme. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, okay. 
let's dive into Psalms. Let's see if Psalms has anything, see if it goes with what I wanted to talk to you about tonight. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it is a miracle how things just go along. Wow, this is a long one. This is a long Psalms. The Lord, the avenger of his people. Another Psalm of David talked about David. He had many, many challenges. People were wanting to kill him. Saul wanted to kill him, chased after him. His own son wanted to kill him at times. He had a lot of challenges, but he trusted in God for all of his challenges. And his challenges were met. Plead my cause, O Lord, with those who strive with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for my help. Also draw out the spear and stop those who pursue, pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let those be put to shame and brought to dishonor who seek after my life. Let those be turned back and brought to confusion who plot my hurt. Let them be like chaff before the wind, and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery, and let the angel of the Lord pursue them. For without cause they have hidden their net for me in a pit, which they have dug without cause for my life. Let destruction come upon him unexpe unexpectedly, and let his net that he has hidden catch himself into that very destruction. Let him fall. So let's just stop there for a second and let's talk about this. He is talking about his enemy and he is talking about the, um, the traps that his enemy has set for him, that the enemy would be caught in those same traps. And, um, uh, He's talking about being challenged right now, that he feels like he's being pursued, that um, he needs God to be his shield and buckler. You know, we feel like that at times when we go through challenges, and we are going to go through challenges um, as we walk through this Christianity journey, because being a Christian doesn't mean that your life is perfect. It means that you don't have to face these challenges on your own, that there, God will send you helpers, or sometimes God will just miraculously do something that will help you in the challenge. He is crying out to God, and my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like you, delivering the poor from him who is too strong for him. Yes, the poor and needy from him who plunders him. Fierce witnesses rise up. They ask me things that I do not know. They reward me evil for good to the sorrow of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I, um, I humbled myself with fasting and my prayer would return to my own heart. I paced about as though he were my friend or brother. I bowed down heavily as one who mourns for his mother. But in my adversary, but in my adversity, they rejoiced and gathered together. Attackers gathered against me, and I did not know it. They tore at me and did not cease with ungodly mockers at feasts. They gnashed at me with their teeth. So he felt like um, his enemy was always after him, that his enemy was deceitful. And um, was like rewarding him evil for good at times. So, the, Lord, how long will you look on Rescue me from their destructions, my precious life from the lions. I will give you thanks in the great assembly. I will praise you among many people. Let them not rejoice over me who are wrongfully my enemies, nor let them wink with the eye who 
hate me without a cause, for they do not speak peace, but they devise deceitful matters against the quiet ones in the land. They also open their mouth wide against me and say, Aha, aha, our eyes have seen it. This you have seen, O Lord. Do not keep silence. O Lord, do not be far from me. Stir up yourself and awake to my vindication. To my cause, my God and my Lord, vindicate me, O Lord, my God, according to your righteousness. And let them not rejoice over me. Let them not say in their hearts, Ah, so we would have it. Let them not say, We have swallowed him up. Let them be ashamed and brought to mutual confusion, who rejoice at my heart. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor, who exalt themselves against me. Let them shout for joy and be glad, who favor my righteous cause. Let, and let them say continually, Let the Lord be magnified, who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. So David faced many challenges, just like we face many challenges. And I guess Gracie, she didn't want to hang out with us. Uh, so this is what the study part of my Bible says about this. There's not a whole lot for as long as this is. It says the psalmist experienced suffering from his enemies, who also are also God's enemies. He prayed vengeance on his enemies. Jesus warned his disciples that the world hated him without reason. However, this psalm's purpose of calling for vengeance on enemies was transformed in the life of Christ, who taught his followers to love their enemies and to pray for their well-being. Jesus displayed an attitude of loving concern toward his enemies. So Jesus had a different outlook on his enemies, and he asked us to love our enemies and to pray for them and to do good for them. Um, but David, he was very downcast about all of the enemies that he felt that he had um, around him. Well, let's talk about challenges because we all face them. And I'm going to read to you what I shared on Facebook just this afternoon. That's why I was a little bit late because I came in here and wrote that instead of doing it earlier today. Oh, but I'm going to explain to you what I've been doing today. And why I'm running so far behind. Okay, so this song, whoops. This song, Yes He Can by Kane. I really like this song. So I watched the 52nd Dove Awards on Saturday night. That's not when it happened, but I just watched it on YouTube. It was over an hour long, and um, this, I believe, was the beginning song. And um, by Cain. Yes, he can. So I've shared it before because I really like this song. I hear it on the radio a lot. Um, but I just really feel like these lyrics are speaking to my soul right now. So I, walk, I woke up thinking about challenges this morning. The challenges that we face in our lives. Some big and some small too. God cares about every one of our challenges. And if we walk, if we will walk through them with Jesus, we will learn on the other side. We will learn from this challenge. These lyrics are so true that talk about all the miraculous, miraculous, I can't speak tonight, miraculous things that God has done. But on a more personal level, he performs miracles for us every day. Mere misses that could have been but weren't. 
Uh, every time I get in the car, I nearly have a wreck because somebody's not driving and sometimes it's me, but most of the time it's somebody else. Um, he protects us 24 seven from so many things, things that we can't even see, things that we don't understand. Yesterday, I faced a huge challenge for me. In my mind, I thought, oh, this won't be hard. And now I laugh out loud because it was very hard. Um, an hour hike around the Meridian State Park. So doable for me. <sighs> laugh out loud again. Um, so I thought, really, how hard could that be? You know, that's what I thought, really. How hard could that be? I can do it. I cycle seven miles a night on my little pedals over there. You know, I can do this. I've got this. I'm in better shape than I was two months ago, which is true. I probably am, but maybe not on this level. It was hard for me. <laughs> The level path was great. When we were on level ground, oh, it was great. I loved it. I could just, man, I could make, I could make time on level ground. And, uh, oh, I lost my place. Um, it was no problem at all. But the uphill climb <laughs> on rock steps that were too, too high for my short legs was a problem. And the same rock steps going down were just as hard too. You would think going down would be better, but oh no, not for me. Um, I was with actual hikers too, and I was the slowest hiker. I was quickly reminded that I am afraid of heights. I, I forget until I face heights and I go, Oh, yeah, you don't like heights. Well, in my mind, when I was thinking hiking, I wasn't thinking hiking into the mountains and hiking down the mountain and going level and then hiking up again and hiking down. That was not what I had in my mind. Anyway. Uh, the great news is that my challenge God sent me that in my challenge, God sent me four helpers, the hands and feet of Jesus, the love and compassion of Jesus. I was quite humbled by the fact that I needed help <laughs> because I'm so independent. I am super independent. So this was not my shining moment. I'll always be thankful for Evan. Treva, Charles, and Bill. No last name necessary. They know who they are. They know how helpful they were, and I have thanked them already. But God knew that on October the 24th of 2021 that I would need help and that I would think that this hike was no problem. <laughs> he knows me. He knows me so well. <laughs> That would become a problem because that is how intimately that God knows me and all of us. He knows all of us intimately. If you're sad and you think that God doesn't know that you're sad, oh, he so knows that you're sad and why and how to help you and all, all the details. He knows all of it. Um, think of all the, the times... And put things think of all the things that God showed up through other people during your challenges and be thankful because he does he sends people you know we're never alone he sends the hands and feet of Jesus to come and help us a lot of times or then or sometimes just provides a way out of that challenge um We had an awesome outing with our youth group at Meridian State Park, and we all had a great time. 
I'm so thankful that I did complete the two-hour hike. I did. Right at the end, <laughs> I told him, I said, just leave me here because I know that Jesus is coming <laughs> And they said, no, you can make it. Come on. <laughs> uh, but I was serious. The other side of our challenges are our blessings and lessons learned. Uh, God loves us and wants to teach us his truths while we were here, while we are here. Jesus, if is Jesus your savior today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to God and to our eternal home forever in heaven, our forever, eternal, forever home in heaven. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John three sixteen through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. And <clears throat> as I was going through that yesterday, oh, uh, I'm just hit my throat. As I was going through that yesterday, I thought about my poor mama and how when she got older, she needed help too. And I did not understand in my 40-year-old body that could do so many things because I was in such good shape. But now I totally understand. <laughs> I totally understand. And today... I feel like I did three hours of aerobics. My my thigh muscle right above my knee is so sore. But that's really the most soreness that I have. And last night in the middle of the night, I had leg cramps. I had to get up and walk. And uh, so I ate a bunch of salt today. I hope that that helps. And I drank a Powerade. So I certainly hope that helps because I don't want to be waking up in the middle of the night with leg cramps anymore. I do that a lot anyway, though. But especially when I do something like that, that is intense exercise or go to a concert and stand for hours then my legs will cramp at night. Okay, well, that was a little bit of sharing some of my personal things that happened yesterday. If you have any personal challenges that you're going through, then please put them in the comments and I will pray over them. Or if you have a funny story that you want to share with me, please share it in the comments. I really need to start going back and reading my comments. But a lot of times people comment things that I don't understand. Like they comment I don't know, what do you call it? Like letters that don't even make a word. And so I don't know what it is. So um, anyway, please write out in words so I can understand whether you like it or not. You know, just so I can understand, so I can get some feedback. But let's do a salvation message. Get those two lately. Let's do Steps to Peace with God. I like this little track. It is a good news track. I didn't make it. And it's really good. I like it. Okay. Well, just crossing my legs is quite painful. Well, if you know what I mean about climbing up rock steps on how painful that can be when you don't climb up rock steps all the time. And by the way, that was my first and only hiking experience that I plan to have, unless it is just walking on a path that is level, um, just like my white water rafting experience that was a one-time shot. I'm just going to like make me a bucket list and start marking all these things off that I've already done. Okay. Steps to peace with God. Most people have an idea of what they believe it will be, it will take to be accepted by God. After all, who likes the idea of exiting this life without being on good terms with him? 
Thankfully, it's possible to be certain that, you, that you've made peace with God, but the way must be chosen during this life. Here are the steps drawn from God's book, the Bible. Step one, understand God's purposes, peace, and eternal life. God loves you and wants you to experience peace and eternal fulfilling life. The Bible says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 5, 1. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life, John 3, 16. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly, John 10, 10. Why don't most people have this peace and the fulfilling, abundant life that God intended for us to have? Step two, admit the problem, our sin and separation. God did not create us like robots to automatically love and mechanically obey him. God gave us a will and the freedom to choose. The first man and woman chose to disobey. God, to disobey God and go their own willful way. And we still make that choice today. This results in separation from God. The Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 For the wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 People have tried so many ways to bridge this gap between themselves and God. The Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. Proverbs 14, 12. Your iniquities have been made have made a separation between you and your God. Isaiah 59, 2. No bridge reaches God except one. So step three, discover God's bridge, the cross. Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the grave. Though he was God's sinless son, he became, he became a human, took our place, and paid the penalty for our sin, bridging the gap between God and us. The Bible says, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2, 5 Christ suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, 1 Peter 3.18. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, Romans 5.8 and Romans 6.23. Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised on the third day. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4. God has provided the only way to forgiveness of sin and eternal life, but each person must make a choice. So step four, embrace the truth, receive Christ. We must trust Jesus Christ as our Savior and receive him by personal choice. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him, and he with me. Revelation 3.20 I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14.6 The Bible says, who, To all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1, 12. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. John three thirty six. So what is your decision? Will you receive Jesus Christ right now and trust in him alone for forgiveness and eternal life? The Bible says that's the only way to find peace with God. Admit your need that you are a sinner in need of God's forgiveness. Be willing to turn from trusting in anything else for eternal life and trust only in Christ. Believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross, came back to life from the grave, and is your only way to heaven. Accept Jesus' offer to forgive your sins 
and come into your life as your Savior. You may want to tell him in words like these. So I'm going to say this prayer, but I'm going to leave some space where you can repeat after me if you would like. Dear Jesus, thank you for making it possible for me to find peace with God. I believe that when you died, you were paying the penalty for my sins. I now receive you into my life as my Savior so I can have forgiveness and never-ending life from God. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, if you said that prayer, if you invited Jesus into your heart, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels are rejoicing, and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, his Son. And so God God shared with me uh, kind of a line. Just I was thinking how I don't have very many viewers on here and how I don't feel like I'm doing, being quite effective, you know. And he shared with me that the time, the little bit of time that I spend on here sharing with others, that one, one person is worth the sacrifice, that Jesus left 99 to go after one sheep that one person is worth the sacrifice one is worth the sacrifice so I'm going to do something with that I don't know quite what but anyway I just I don't know I watch a lot of YouTube with people that have a lot of viewers and sometimes I just get thinking like I have no viewers, but you know what? It's not about me. It's about Jesus, and it's about the message that God wants me to share with somebody. I don't even know who you are out there, but God has a message for you, and God wants you to know that he will. He sees your challenge. He sees your challenges, and he knows how to meet your challenges. He knows how to help you walk through your challenges that Jesus can walk you through. He knows what lesson that he wants you to learn through that challenge. Yesterday I learned humility and it wasn't it wasn't easy for me because I'm very independent. I do a lot of things on my own, you know. But sometimes we have to be humble. And sometimes we have to accept people's help because we're just not able to do it. We're not strong enough. You know, I'm, I wasn't tall enough to do those um, high rocks. And I didn't like the height thing. I'm afraid of heights. And uh, I didn't feel confident that it was not my comfort zone at all. But sometimes God will pull us out of our comfort zones because he wants us to trust him. So trust God in all your challenges. If you feel challenged, pray to God. Pray for him to help you get through. Okay? I think that's all I want to share. I think... That's all I came here to share. Let me give you God's blessing, and I'm going to pray out of here. And I'm sorry I was late, but like I said, I'm I am suffering in pain, but not as much as what I anticipated. So I'm thankful for that. Okay, Numbers six twenty-four through twenty-six. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God wants to give us peace. He wants to help us. He wants to send people to help us. Sometimes that's his way of helping us through a challenge. Is to send like I have four new heroes. And I know when the chips are down that those people are going to help me if I need help. And that's a good thing to know. We need to be that kind of helper too. We need to be that kind of helper. We need to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We need to boldly go out and proclaim God's truths. Stand up against lies and stand for truth. And we need to share the gospel so that more people can be saved. All right, I'm going to pray. God, we just thank you for this time that you've given us. Thank you, God, for a message about challenges. And uh, thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving me the words to say. God, we just pray that you would give us the boldness that we need to go out and stand for your truths and to share the gospel of Jesus to a hurting and broken world that faces challenges every day. God, help us to be the hands and feet in the loving compassion for others that are, that are uh, facing challenges today. I just pray for anyone that watches this, that you would bless their families, God, that you would protect them and provide for them, that you would lead and guide and guard and protect and be with them, God, that they would feel your presence. I already said protect once. God, we just thank you. We thank you for loving us and calling us as your children, for giving us a calling and for helping us to be in the places that you need for us to be. For opening doors when you need us to walk through them and for closing the ones that you don't want us to walk through. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my pray and share warriors. Have an awesome Tuesday. Have an awesome rest of your night. And uh, I'll bless all you all and your families abundantly. Much love. I'm still not very good at making this hard. Much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night. Oh. The hurting.